okay listen last class that is uh, last class we have seen uh, different types of sensor that is in unit 2 we are discussing about uh, different types of uh, sensor so uh, we have seen the last class uh, what magnetic electron sensor and uh, we have seen crankshaft position camshaft position and we discussed about uh, all effect then temperature sensor so like this uh, sensors we have discussed okay in continuation of that today i will be completing a second unit for you because it is full of sensors only just you have to remember the sketch what it is going to sense how it is going to sense that will be your sufficient okay the layout of the sensor what it is going to sense and how it is going to sense so first of all we will uh, start with the uh, mass air flow sensor okay mass air flow sensor uh, see in the name itself it is given what it is going to sense so it is going to sense mass of air that is i will be having a ic engine where i will be injecting the fuel that is in a corporated engine what will happen i will be mixing air and fuel okay whereas uh, fuel injected uh, ic engine uh, i have to sense the air that is how much uh, amount of air is going to come i have to sense so based on that only i can meter the fuel that is i can send the exact quantity of the fuel okay who has joined so please dinagaran okay see if anyone wants to join no you unmute the call and you inform me because i will be in ppt okay uh, based on some beep sound only i will be going to the browser if i am not able to listen you please unmute your call and inform me so that i can uh, allow them to join hmm? okay so what is the main function is it will uh, sense the mass of the air that is mass flow rate of the air so based on that only we can uh, meter the fuel correctly if i am going to sense the mass air flow i can uh, provide a, what to say a chemically correct air fuel ratio that is uh, i can supply the correct quantity of the fuel based on my air flow so that uh, my combustion will be uh, complete and i will be able to produce uh, more uh, power okay so that is a main uh, advantage of this mass air flow sensor so you can see here correct fuel mass to the engine by using this input by using the input from uh, mass air flow sensor a electronic control unit will be delivering the correct fuel mass to the engine so ecu will uh, send the in, uh, will uh, get the input from mass air flow sensor then it will uh, activate the fuel injector that is it will be sending signals signals means it can be in terms of electricity or electric signals okay so it will be sending to fuel injector to inject the correct amount of fuel okay so what it will be doing no the air density variations i have to know that is why we have to sense uh, mass air flow means uh, whenever uh, air is going to pass over the engine no the density of the air may be changed i have to know about the air density that is how much air density is nothing but mass so there are variations since the variations are there i have to know about the air flow so that only i am using this sensor for example when you are increasing the temperature of the air my air density will be uh, decreased when i am increasing the pressure my air density will be increasing so air density changes with the temperature as well as uh, pressure okay so i have to understand this variation for understanding this variation i need a mass air flow sensor okay so there are two types of air flow sensor there is mass air flow sensor one is a vane meter and another one is hot wire i'll be explaining about this a vane meter is one part and hot wire uh, mass air flow sensor is another type both will be can be asked for your uh, exam okay in both the uh, cases there is no direct measurement that is a directly i will not be measuring mass air flow rate okay so directly i can't uh, measure mass flow rate what i will be doing is i will be getting input from other units also to measure the mass air flow okay so direct measurement is uh, not possible i need input from other uh, devices okay so where i will be using this uh, main meter means you, you you might have studied in automotive engines 
electronic fuel injection engine that is my fuel injection will be controlled electronically so in that uh, applications you no know, i'll be using this sensor that is van meter mass air flow sensor and uh, this value is given if you are able to remember you can uh, go get with this value that is uh, how much volt it will be generating 0 to 5 otherwise it can produce a pulse width modulation okay this one is voltage the output is a voltage where this one is a pulse width modulation you might have seen some graph the pulses uh, width modulation that is we are taking ec you know so based on that uh, i can uh, get a input related to air mass flow rate okay so uh, what is the other devices i am going to use in this uh, van meter uh, mass air flow sensor is i have to know about intake air temperature sensor okay that is iat wait for a second kartik d okay so any time i will be uh, taking attendance you listen the class so see uh, i told you know for measuring the air flow sensor we need a additional unit that is a intake air temperature sensor okay that is a additional unit iat intake air temperature sensor will be needed to measure this uh, mass air flow rate so this sensor is going to work along with intake air temperature sensor and another thing is it can work with oxygen sensor this is very very important for regulating air fuel ratio that will be called as a lambda sensor we will be studying it later that is what it will do no that is it will be uh, mounted in exhaust uh, manifold that is in uh, exhaust gases will be going in exhaust manifold so there the sensor will be uh, mounted okay so there it will be sensing the amount of oxygen it means that i didn't use my oxygen effectively the amount of oxygen should be low why no the oxygen should be utilized in the ic engine so that i will be getting the power and it will be able to convert the emission carbon will be converted into carbon dioxide hydrocarbon will be converted into water vapor so it will be oxidized okay so uh, if oxygen content is more in the exhaust pipe i can uh, have a inference that my engine is not working properly i am not utilizing the oxygen properly so what i can do is i can alter my air fuel ratio along with the air flow sensor and uh, together with oxygen sensor what i can do is i can control my air fuel ratio i can uh, optimize my air fuel ratio so that uh, Uh, i'll be having a less oxygen concentration in exhaust pipe okay so whenever uh, i am going to use mass air flow sensor listen carefully this point you have to discuss this is very very uh, important that is a uh, whenever you are using mass air flow sensor it is a open loop controller system open loop means i am not getting any out uh, feedback whereas oxygen sensor i am getting the feedback that is how much oxygen it is going to be consumed in the ic engine how uh, effectively i am going to use the oxygen so you have to remember mass air flow sensor alone if i am going to use it will be open loop controller if i am going to use oxygen sensor then it will be closed to loop feedback okay so how it is going to work let me uh, show the sketch then uh, you will be uh, knowing it okay so this one is a vane okay this is this one is a rotating element vane so air will be flowing because i am going to measure the air flow so air will be flowing over this uh, plate uh, sorry vane so my vane will be uh, moving so based on this movement i can predict my mass air flow that is a mass air flow sensor it is a mass air flow sensor i will be able to predict the mass air flow rate okay otherwise i can use the word mass flow rate of air okay this is the basic principle by using a vane i am going to sense the air flow and from that i am going to sense the mass air flow rate see and this one is a opening that is i have opened the cover okay you can uh, see the vane operator and uh, you can see uh, this one will be the more uh, uh, what to say more uh, detailed uh, sketch and here you can uh, You, here you can see uh, correct 
understanding you can understand uh, correctly okay let me explain this then we will go to the slide to add some other uh, points see uh, this is a flap okay you listen carefully this is a flap you are able to see my cursor no if not uh, unmute and uh, inform okay so this is the flap okay so what will happen this flap will be moving when air is going to enter when air is going to enter my flap will be moving it due to the air drag air drag means what we might have studied in a vddc resistance that is actually when a vehicle is traveling the force aerodynamic drag will be acting that is not desirable because it will be opposing the vehicle motion whereas here i am going to measure the mass flow rate by air drag only so air drag the air will be exerting a force on my flap so it will be moving okay so when it is moving i, I will be connecting to a potentiometer what is a potentiometer means a potentiometer will be used for this type of application where between two voltage uh, between two voltage my system voltage can be varied for example you are having a regulator switch in the fan no you can vary the voltage okay so the same thing only the potentiometer is going to do for example one terminal last class i have told you one terminal will be grounded and another terminal i will be having a reference voltage say 5 volt so in my application where i have to measure the voltage it can be varied based on uh, the input okay so i can measure the variable voltage with help of this potentiometer and variable ratio is 0 to 5 volt the reference is 5 so i will be connecting this uh, uh, to potentiometer why no my air flow is varied so i will be getting a voltage which is uh, variable okay so i will be able to measure the air flow rate okay and here you can see there is a idle uh, screw idle screw is for uh, idling what you will be doing no uh, you have to enrich the mixture so what uh, you have to do there is a bypass circuit is there so depending upon the movement of the screw whether i have to move clockwise or anti clockwise i can change the air flow mixture that is it can be richer or it can be leaner for idling i will be making the arrangement uh, to be richer okay this idling screw is uh, operated manually then another thing uh, you can see fuel pump see what i have told by sensing the air flow only the fuel will be injected okay so what will happen i have to send the input of the air flow to the fuel pump so what will happen uh, based on the air flow my uh, fuel pump switch will be activated that is a uh, the flash uh, the flap no it has to move then only my fuel pump will be there is a switch for fuel pump will be uh, what to say it will be uh, triggered or it will be opened then only i will be getting the fuel okay when this flap is not uh, moving it is giving a indication that air is not entering so i should not waste the fuel so it, the switch for fuel pump will be closed okay so th this sketch will be more uh, explanatory and in examination point of view you can adapt this sketch okay so this is the working of mass air flow sensor and we'll be seeing some additional points okay that is some additional points i have listed out so see you can see here it is a spring loaded so in the sketch i can show it is a spring loaded okay i have to overcome this uh, spring force i am correlating the sketch with the points what i have listed okay so this points why i am listing no so that it will be like a book so that you can uh, go through so i am representing by points uh, wise no need to write number you can present like this also so that uh, you may get uh, more marks okay so that is a more uh, readable format okay uh, nothing uh, different from your book uh, keeping uh, the main important key points what words you have to remember i am uh, listing out so that uh, it will be uh, imposed on your mind uh, twice that is when i am teaching the concept and when i am going through a uh, discussion about this uh, points okay so see there is a spring loaded air flap i have shown in the sketch you know that is a spring loaded uh, air flap and uh, already i told you it is connected to a variable resistor that is a potentiometer and uh, the vane will be moving according to the air flow okay so the vane will be moving according to the air flow the potentiometer will be generating a voltage okay so i am correlating uh, both okay 
so this is a uh, main thing i want to discuss okay some points uh, we have to refer the slide because we might have forgotten that point okay so here see this air flow sensor will be located again of the throttle that is a uh, it will be located after uh, throttle okay and uh, already i have told you there is a adjustment uh, screw by using this adjustment screw only i will be able to uh, richen the mixture or uh, lean the mixture richen means more fuel content lean means uh, uh, air air will be more okay so you can see when i am rotating the screw clockwise the mixture is enriched when i am uh, rotating the screw counter clockwise the mixture is leaned okay so already i told you how the van is going to move due to the drag force of the gear on the drag force this is the very important point you have to discuss okay some uh, specific points that is uh, when you are seeing the sketch you will be able to present 70 or 80 percent and remaining 20 percent for completing your uh, detailed explanation you have to remember some points for example located again of the throttle and uh, i have to discuss uh, about the drag force the drag force depends upon what the drag force is an indication of mass air flow rate okay so it depends upon air density and air velocity and shape of the vein so these three things you have to highlight this is very very important there is this when you are going to work on mass air flow sensor you should be knowing the parameters uh, that will be influencing the drag force so in order to get in order to measure the air flow rate accurately you have to concentrate on this uh, parameter okay that is uh, air density air velocity air density indirectly depends upon uh, temperature and uh, pressure also so already i have told you there will be additional unit that is air temperature sensor and drawbacks of this uh, sensors i have listed out that is uh, this sensor is mounted in the air flow unit okay so when the air is going to enter into the engine the sensor will be in that passage only so it will restrict the air flow so my engine output is getting reduced due to the sensor i am not mounting uh, somewhere i am obstructing the air flow so my engine output will be uh, reduced and you can see i am uh, having a uh, mechanical parts okay so what will happen the mechanical parts are moving there will be a wear so that will be the second problem you might have studied in uh, ignition system the contact breaker points will be subjected to i wear and tear because it is subjected to i force and i current will be uh, passing so it will be subjected to wear then we have developed a contact lux uh, ignition system okay so similar to that uh, your mechanical parts are there you will be having a wear okay and mounting location yeah, i can't uh, mount wherever i want the correct exact position is not uh, easy it is a problematic okay and another thing this is the main thing you have to focus i can't keep uh, the vein just like that i have to keep my vein uh, the vein should be oriented properly with respect to gravity then only the air drag will be acting and i will be able to measure the mass air flow rate otherwise i will not be able to measure okay so that is very very important orientation of this drag plate okay so that is about uh, mass air flow sensor that is a vein meter sensor vaf okay so already i have told you where i will be using efi so these are the words again i am repeating so that uh, uh, you have, you should not miss this point for discussion in your uh, answer sheet okay efi electronic fuel injection okay efi is electronic fuel injection okay in that only i am going to use uh, this sensor okay and uh, another thing is uh, this gens uh, gens uh, this uh, sensor i've been uh, used in carman uh, vortex air flow sensor it can be called as a carman vortex that is the vein meter that's principle is used in carman vortex and bosch l jetrodronic uh, fuel injection i am using this sensor these are some additional points that is application of van meter sensor that is where i am using it okay in bosch i am using that is l jetrodronic and in japanese application carman vortex and uh, you are not uh, i am not going to discuss about this both because we'll be seeing it uh, later okay just you have to remember the application so let us see the, uh next topic hot wire sensor see here that is the previous one what i have done 
i am having a vein air is going to pass over the vein the vein is going to get uh, rotated so that uh, i am going to measure the air flow but here i am going to uh, do by art wire sensor that is i will be measuring the temperature of the wire okay based on the temperature of the wire and the uh, resistance how it is going to generate uh, i will be correlating the data with the mass air flow so that i can measure the air flow okay so you remember the word art wire so art wire means what will happen the temperature of the wire will be increased okay so by that uh, principle i am going to measure the air flow okay so where they have used no okay any doubts let me check uh, who all are listening in the class Karthik D is there. Unmute yes, your sir. call. Very good. Kevin Raj. Kevin Raj is not attending the class. Preeti. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kevin Raj. Shashwin. Sir, yes, sir. Uh, Kevin, why you are sitting near the TV room, man? Go to some isolated room. Later, you can watch TV. சொல்லுங்க மீனாட்சி சுந்தரம் இஸ் கமிங் நவ் வாட் அபவுட் சதீஷ் தினகரன் சதீஷ் தினகரன் அன்மியூட் யுவர் கால் no reply what about your uh, you have to speak in mic okay yesterday we have a discussion with the uh, principal sir what he has uh, instructed is uh, student should be uh, speaking in the mic uh, no need of uh, going to chat box so that uh, uh, it will be more interactive section like a classroom okay so try to rectify satish dinagaran try to rectify your mic then only the classes will be uh, interacting we'll be taking class for some time and 5 minutes uh, we can uh, discuss about your problem or whatever issues okay so that we will have a live environment what about meenakshi sundaram simply connected simply huh? connected yeah you huh? are listening yes, now you are listening why now why you are late man why you are late man meenakshi sundaram meenakshi sundaram sir bank varin peru okay so now we will so see now the, we will see the hot wire sensor hot wire sensor mean axis sundram mean axis sundram you are called hot wire sensor okay you are able to see the slide anyone please unmute and uh, confirm you are able to see the slide yes sir screen is visible okay so here hot wire sensor uh, i play uh, go to play important role on uh, temperature temperature resistance you remember this word whenever i am getting the word hot wire sensor you have to remember temperature resistance okay so let me explain now this sketches and all are different first of all i will explain the working principle of hot wire sensor so you might have studied in uh, uh, some other course hot wire anemometer okay the same principle only we are going to use so you as uh, developed this sensor no that is to measure this mass air flow uh, the concept of hot wire sensor have been uh, devised by general motor okay general motor you know about general motors no uh, a leading automobile manufacturer in the world okay so they have devised this uh, hot wire uh, sensor 
so what is the basic principle no they we will be using a wire okay in the wire what will happen when the temperature is going to increase the resistance increase you remember this parameter okay so i am going to explain this with the point in the slide as well as uh, i am also going to explain that okay so this is very very important this is a concept what will happen to the wire no that is wire resistance will increase as wire temperature increases okay when temperature is going to increase my resistance also will increase okay now uh, see what will happen when air is going no need to see other points just to listen what i am going to explain when air is going to pass through this wire what will happen you think first of all uh, this wire property is the wire resistance will increase when the temperature increases when air is going to pass over this wire it will remove the heat from the wire so that the uh, temperature will decrease correct when air is going to pass over this wire what will happen this temperature will decrease this temperature will decrease so that uh, the resistance also will decrease okay so this is the main thing resistance also will be decreased okay so remember this point i'll be explaining what is happen no need to go through this point i will explain how i am going to sense the air flow so the concept is the wire electrical resistance increases with temperature when the temperature increases resistance increases when the temperature decreases the resistance decreases so when i am heating this wire what will happen uh, sorry not heating the wire i used the wrong word when air is going to pass over this wire it will take away the heat so temperature decreases and resistance increases you okay uh, sorry sorry when i am passing the air over the wire temperature decreases so resistance also decreases i use the word uh, increases so this type of confusion will come so carefully you listen okay so now once the air is going to pass over this wire my resistance will decrease up to this you understand okay now first we will go with the first case i am keeping a wire okay i will explain it clearly now i am keeping a wire okay now what happens the wire temperature increases in that uh, wire i am passing a current i am explaining in a different manner now i am explaining the entire concept now previously i have explained the parameter relationship between resistance and temperature now i am explaining how it will measure the mass air flow rate so consider a wire okay consider a wire i am passing a current over the wire you know l i squared rt okay so what will happen heat will be generated and temperature of the wire will increase okay listen current current is passed through the wire temperature increases that is heat generated temperature uh, increases and resistance also increases it will be going up to a particular limit only after a limit what will happen uh, i can't increase my temperature further okay so there will be a limit now what happen when the equilibrium uh, is reached further uh, current uh, will not be supplied to the wire you remember this word once the temperature current is going to pass over the wire temperature increases that is it increases the heat resistance increases then what will happen due to the increase in the temperature of the wire i can't pass the current to the wire beyond that uh, level a saturation point will be reached now what will happen air is going to come that is i am going to measure air flow rate okay so air is going to come and pass over this wire now what will happen the saturation point uh, will be uh, destroyed that is it will take the heat from the wire it will take the heat from the wire what will happen uh, the temperature will decrease okay uh, okay temperature will decrease now resistance also decrease now you understand the meaning temper air is going to pass over the wire temperature decreases resistance also decreases when resistance decreases what will happen i can pass more current to the flow okay so at that time the amount of current flow to the uh, wire will be the indication 
that is the how much amount of air is going to come okay so let me explain again so that you not be confused consider a wire that is a hot wire its temperature will uh, increase resistance also increase so initially what i am doing i am passing a current to the wire when i am passing current to the wire what will happen its temperature will increase and resistance also increase so resistance will increase and will be reaching a point a saturation point so maximum resistance will be there and after that there will be no current flow you will be knowing resistance more means current flow will be reduced so a point will be reached a current can flow in the circuit okay at that point what i will be doing i will be allowing uh, the air to pass over this wire i will be measuring the mass air flow so what will happen the air will be flowing over the wire mass will be flowing over the wire so now what will happen now temperature will decrease the air will uh, remove the heat from the temperature sorry the air will remove the heat from the wire okay so now temperature decreases when the temperature decreases the resistance decreases when the resistance decreases what will happen again previously current will not flow now due to the air flow temperature decreases resistance also decreases air will flow oh, sorry current will flow okay current will flow to the circuit so now the current which is flowing into the circuit will be the indication of the mass of air see the next wording the amount of current okay that how much amount of current i am going to give to that wire to maintain the wire temperature that is i have to maintain the wire temperature no that much amount of current will be proportional to mass of air okay so i have not uh, put all the points in the slide just i have put the parameter but whatever explanation i have given you have to write that is uh, after some time uh, you will be getting some current no that current will be directly relating to the mass of air so here uh, it, it is directly uh, relating to air density in the previous one vane sensor i will be using a additional unit that is i will be using a temperature sensor okay but here uh, why i am using temperature sensor means i have to respond to the density whereas here hot wire sensor will respond directly to the density okay so hot wire sensor will be responding directly to the density okay and here the screw is fully electronic whereas uh, you can see the previous model screw is mechanic okay so here the screw is uh, fully electronic and we are using the potentiometer the same principle to measure the voltage and uh, we are having additional unit called burn off relay burn off relay means uh, you are having a wire no uh some deposits will be accumulated okay so in order to remove that deposits i will be passing a i current so that i can remove the deposits okay so that is a hot wire uh, sensor and this is a circuit that i will be using in uh, cars okay so what will happen when air is going to enter into the sensor you might have studied a catalytic converter i think whether you have studied or not it will be a honeycomb structure honeycomb means uh, it is like a ladder a series of ladder okay that is similar to your four line notebook so what will happen in that i will be having a dust filter my sensor should not be accumulated with the dirt uh, what will happen no uh, my sensor working will be affected okay so i will be having a dust collector so that i will be uh, removing the dirt so that uh, clean air will be entering into the sensor okay and here the structure will be hot flame okay previously uh, you have seen a wire is hot flame okay so what will happen see this circuit i am going to explain with this help of uh, circuit only here i am having a amplifier amplifier will be providing a voltage to this uh, wheatstone network you might have studied in a uh, plus 2 a wheatstone bridge okay the same thing only amplifier will be sending a voltage to this uh, wheatstone bridge okay so to from two points i am taking a v that is i am measuring a voltage one is a vb and another one is a va what will happen uh, there are three resistor you see the circuit r1 r2 r3 okay there is another uh, uh, 
similar to resistance but it is not a resistor it is a hot flame okay that is a where through which uh, air is going to flow okay that is a resistance of hot flame hw okay so when no air is going to pass over this uh, r uh, hw that is a heat flame sorry hot flame what will happen the voltage produced by da and db will be zero there is a difference between da and db will be zero because uh, uh, the bridge uh, will not be collapsed it will be uh, say it will be balanced the correct word is balanced because all the resistance in the air run there is no drop in uh, resistance since the air is not going to flow over this uh, resistor so there will be no difference of the voltage so uh, it will be uh, balanced okay now consider the case current is uh, air is going to flow over this uh, resistance okay already i told you when air is going to flow over this resistor it will reduce the temperature when temperature is getting reduced resistance will decrease previously my resistance is maintained now when air is going to flow through this resistor what will happen my resistance value decreases my resistance value decreases means what will happen the my wheatstone bridge which is balanced now it will not be balanced there will be a voltage okay initially the difference between db and da will be zero when it is balanced now when air is going to pass over this resistor there will be a voltage that is there will be no zero there will be a voltage and that voltage will be entering into the amplifier now you understand carefully that voltage will be entering into the amplifier amplifier will be amplifying the voltage and that voltage will be input for my wheatstone bridge you are able to understand that is the voltage required for functioning of this wheatstone bridge i am going to get from what a amplifier okay for amplifier the input voltage also i am going to get from air only whenever uh, air is going to flow a voltage will be developed and that will be entering into the amplifier and i will be sending the voltage to operate this so how much amount of voltage is going to enter into the circuit the voltage variation no so once it is balanced the voltage will be having one value once it is unbalanced so let's say my resistance value decreased due to hot air flow what happens now uh, due to air flow so what happens now the voltage level will be changed so this change in voltage will be a indication that is how much amount of air is going to flow what is the mass flow rate of air okay so you can see now that is a output voltage air flow so based on the air flow my output voltage will increase okay now i will be showing a, a video how the mass air flow sensor is going to work now the screen is visible to all yes sir okay i'll be showing some animations and working see uh, it since it is an online class continuously if i am speaking it will be more boring so once i am completing my topic i will be showing some animation so that you will be having a change in the teaching learning process okay so first of all i will explain what i have explained the same thing uh, you are uh, but what is the problem with uh, google meet no i think you are not able to hear the voice voice is okay now
so now what is explain no let me uh, summarize it okay so you see we are having honeycomb structure no i told this is honeycomb structure okay so here i will be having a, a cleaner that is a dirt particle remover okay so that will be removing the dirt and uh, here you can see see ohm's law that is uh, i told you know i is equal to v by r that is uh, whenever resistance uh, is going to get decreased current flow will be increased okay so that uh, the voltage what we are going to get that will be indication of air flow see he has given a uh, indication when air flow is going to increase my element temperature will decrease see this arrow okay air flow is getting increased my element temperature decrease resistance decrease current increases then temperature again increases you see the sequence of this event okay you will be able to explain this concept well when you are able to see this air flow increases temperature decreases due to the temperature decreases resistance also decreases resistance decreases current again will increase current will keep the temperature increase current will increase the temperature and it will maintain the temperature okay so how much amount of uh, current is required to keep the element temperature before level that will be the voltage that will be calibrated as a voltage and that will be the measure of your mass yeah so go through this video were to have a mass airflow sensor it will be located directly behind the air box so there will be an attack so here only the air flow sensor will be there sir ninga play pandra video oda audio romba minute level la kekku sir adha adjust panna mudiyuma check pannunga sir idu youtube la vara audio va ungalku nalla sound ah kekkuradhukku na enna seiyanum hod kitta venna kitta paranga sir அது என்னன்னா நிறைய பேருக்கு நான் விடிடிசி கிளாஸ்லயும் இந்த வீடியோ பிளே பண்ணும்போது அவனுக்கு அந்த சவுண்ட் வரலங்கறான் ஹெச்ஓடி என்ன ஒரு ஐடியா கேட் பாருங்க சார் ஏனா அவர் பண்ணுவாரு இல்ல एक्चुअली என்னோட ஹெட்செட்டை கழட்டி விட்டு தான் கேக்கணும் நினைக்கிறேன் இப்போ ஒரு நிமிஷம் நான் ஒரு ஆன் பண்றேன் இந்த வீடியோவை இது எப்படி வருதுன்னு உங்களுக்கு நான் இத எடுத்துறேன் இப்ப கேக்குதான் மட்டும் பாருங்க
See what is the problem is uh, video you see this audio I'll be explaining it. Okay. See what they are telling us uh, where to locate the mass airflow sensor. Okay, how it is constructed and working. They are going to explain. Okay. Now we're starting with the location. So what they are doing now, they are providing in throttle body or inlet manifold. So this one will be inlet manifold. That is once the air is going to enter, we'll be having air filter. So after air filter, they are going to keep the mass airflow sensor. Uh, this one is similar to our art wire, okay? And uh, we are having a, another sensor, temperature sensor, okay? To measure the temperature of air to know the density variation. So you can see the dust filter so that it will be preventing the sensor. Sir, yeah. Google Meet uh, application learning uh, the settings lo check pan sir audio option le. Aray arusha. Tell pay 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 pona. Google Meet kaise ulla dar gran. Yes sir. Um, and the ah uh, yes sir, andai kam. Audio. Audio. Default microphone. Sir, one second, sir. Communication speaker. Sir, speaker, speaker, sponsor, audio. Speaker. Yes, sir. Speaker, 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 this is sound nalla kekudhu i definition audio device pata you free to go to the to the Okay. See, now I will be explaining this. Listen carefully. Here I am having a temperature sensor, okay? And here I am having a hot wire. That is a tungsten wire. So, uh, air is going to flow through this uh, passage, okay? That is, I am having a dust uh, remover that will be removing the dust and it will be passing through the sensor unit. This temperature sensor, no, it will be sensing the temperature of air and it will be giving an input to the electronic control model that is ECU and it will be sending a, that is a current to this wire to increase the temperature beyond of this listen carefully say this temperature is 30 this 30 will be measured by this temperature sensor and will be sent to ECU now ECU will be sending current to this uh, wire to keep the temperature above 30 so what will happen when this uh, air is going to flow over this, why I am have to keep above 30, you know, then only it will, uh, heat transfer will take place. You might have studied, uh, heat transfer will take place from high temperature to low temperature. 
so when heat transfer have to take place from wire to air my temperature of my wire should be more okay so so that only ecu is uh, sending current to this wire and keeping the temperature more so when the air is going to pass over this uh, wire what will happen uh, the wire uh, heat will be rejected to the air so resistance will get decreased listen carefully temperature get decreased resistance getting decreased so the resistance uh, decreased and uh, that will be causing the current to flow again that is amount of current will be flowing again that current will be the indication of mass air flow whatever i explain same only but with a, a sketch okay so what i have explained the same thing only kartik uh, final year student oh he has given some uh, on start button open settings okay uh, i'll be uh, trying next class because uh, we can't uh, waste the time now let me try and uh, let me uh, see whether the next class is working or not okay so now okay hmm, we will go to the so now i have discussed about this one wheatstone bridge okay so this wheatstone bridge is used for hot wire sensor and you can see this uh, the same thing it is represented in a sensor wiring diagram sensor installation diagram i think now it will be magnified that is when i am increasing the size of the image a better visibility will be there okay so no need to refer you refer this sketch qms air flow okay rk is what temperature condensation resistor see now i have shown one video no similar to that temperature condensation resistor then uh, rh hot wire resistor then rm rm is measuring resistor and r1 r2 bridge balance uh, resistor measurement voltage is uh, um okay ih is uh, current heating current the current is going to the resistor okay so this one is a uh, air temperature il is a uh, air temperature and qm is air mass flow okay so this layout will be a uh, good that is a wheatstone i have told you know the same thing this wheatstone only we are representing like this nothing uh, different okay rm is what my resistance of this uh, measuring resistor okay
so next we will proceed to camshaft position sensor shall we start i will have some water i will come after 5 uh, minutes okay you have a break for 5 minutes i will come within 5 minutes okay Shall we start now?
Yes, sir. Okay. What about others? Kevin Raj. Kevin Raj. Minakshi Sundaram. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Pranay Sainath. Pranay Sainath is not there. Preeti. Yes, sir. Sashwin. Vasant. Now see, we are going to discuss the uh, camshaft uh, position sensor. That is uh, the last class I told you know magnetic uh, reluctance. That is magnetic reluctance means uh, magnetic resistance, and depending upon my uh, magnetic permeability, that is magnetic uh, strength, I can measure my voltage. That vol uh, uh, voltage change will be there. Then I can measure the voltage. The voltage uh, will be the indication of position of the cam. Uh, position uh, that may be uh, that is when the piston is at uh, TDC before expansion shaft. Now the same thing we are going to do for camshaft. Last class we discussed about uh, crankshaft. Now we are di discussing about uh, camshaft. Here what I am having you no know, instead of having a protruding tab, the tab is not extending uh, beyond the circumference. It is uh, we are having a notch. Okay, we are having a notch. Now the explanation will be. Uh, uh, it it will be different. Okay, why you know? Here, continuously the magnetic circuit is closed. Listen carefully. I am having a magnet that will be creating a magnetic field, and uh, there is a what here is a notch is there. So before that, what will happen? I am having a steel disc. Okay, so when the steel disc is rotating, notch is not coming into picture. The magnetic circuit will be closed. Okay, so there is no. Magnetic flux variation, but magnetic field strength will be there, and uh, magnetic flux will be increasing. Okay, so when uh, the solid part is going to pass over the magnet, okay, when the notch is going to come, what happen? Air, air will be entering into this area. Air already you don't uh, already you know it is having less permeability to the magnetism. So what will happen? Air will offer a resistance to the magnet. Okay. So now, whatever uh, magnetic field strength increased, it will be decreasing. So here only the change of magnetic flux is going to take place. When this notch is going to come uh, between that uh, magnet, what will happen? Magnetic flux will be changing. That is, it will be coming from maximum value to zero when the notch is completely uh, present. If the notch is going to, that is, initially it will be decreasing. And later in this part, increasing area, what will happen? It will be increasing. The magnetic flux uh, will be reaching the uh, constant value once this uh, steel part is going to come. Okay, so uh, I'm using a notch here. What will happen? Magnetic flux will not uh, increase. Magnetic flux will decrease. Then it will be increasing. The last uh, class we have seen, magnetic flux will be increasing. Then it will be decreasing. So I will be identifying this position. That is when there is a change in voltage the sensor voltage there is a there will be a change in uh, magnetic flux no rate of change of magnetic flux so that input will be giving uh, sensor voltage will be increased or there will be a change so that will be an indication that uh, piston reaches a tdc before uh, i expansion stroke is going to start so that i can understand the cam position okay so what will happen for one revolution, we will be getting one voltage uh, pulse. Okay. Next, uh, wheel speed sensor. Wheel speed sensor you will be using in ABS, that is anti lock braking system. Okay. So now let me uh, zoom the sketch, then only you will be able to see. We no need to see other things. For us, we are bothering about what? Wheel speed 
sensor you focus on this uh, area alone okay so what is a wheel speed sensor no in abs uh, for abs electronic control uh, unit no i need a uh, input of my wheel speed that is uh, what is the speed of the wheel if the wheel speed is going to decrease that is i can uh, sense that uh, the wheel is uh, about to lock uh, that is uniformly all the wheels should come to rest okay so if any one of the wheel is going to come to rest i can sense its speed that will be sent to ecu so that ecu will sense that the wheel is able uh, about to lock so it will modify the brake pressure in the pipeline it will be modifying the hydraulic uh, pressure so that the wheel locking will be preventing so that uh, we will not have a uh, skidding the rubbing of tire or scrubbing of tire will not take place so that uh, stability also will be ensured that is in anti lock braking system so we are using what wheel sensor so here different types of wheel sensor we are going to discuss okay so oh sorry uh, wheel sensor working we are going to discuss you see wheel sensor how it works we are having a reluctor reluctor means it will be providing resistance to the magnetic field okay so we can say a toothed wheel so in nearer to the toothed wheel i will be having a permanent magnet the magnet will not be touching the reluctor the magnet will not be touching the tooth okay so i will be having a magnet and what will happen uh, around the magnet i will be having a, a pickup coil a pickup coil means a coil will be wound around this uh, magnet so what happen when a magnetic flux is going to be changed a voltage will be introduced in the pickup coil that voltage can be measured okay now you can see uh, here that is between uh, the gap between the magnet and the reluctor that magnetic field will be existing okay so here magnet is there since it is a magnetic permeable material i'll be having a magnetic field in this area now what will happen you can see slots that is when this outer projection is going to come magnetic field will be closed when there is a groove there is a change in magnetic field the magnetic flux uh, will be reducing and then it will be increasing so what i am doing is the magnetic flux is uh, getting a change okay so a reluctor is rotating my toothed wheel is uh, rotating so it is rotating at a speed that the speed will be correlated with rate of change of magnetic flux your magnetic field is there that is going to cut uh, the magnetic flux will be changing alternatively as the tooth is going to pass okay it will be coming to zero and it will be going to uh, it will be come it will be decreasing and it will be increasing and there will be a change we can't say the magnetic flux will be uh, same value it will be changing and that change will be correlated to the speed that the change can be measured as a voltage and then voltage can be correlated to sense the wheel speed okay that is the working of wheel speed sensor it is a very easy just you have to draw this uh, sketch no need to draw the car and all man it is for anti lock braking only you have to draw the car for this uh, you just to draw this sketch okay so what we can infer is the now important thing is how many pulses i am going to get per second is directly proportional to the speed of the wheel okay there is how many pulses per second that will be directly proportional to the speed of the wheel okay this is the working of a wheel speed of sensor and this one is crash sensor oh, no 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 tire pressure sensor next one only crash sensor okay then uh, optical with this uh, we are uh, winding up the class second unit is over okay now i have to see tire pressure sensor you can see here uh, there is a simplified uh, sketch uh, for this no there is no any sophist uh, sophisticated equipment we are having some uh, pressure sensor okay pressure sensor will be sensing the quant uh, pressure of any fluid here uh, i am going to sense uh, air okay so pressure sensor will be mounted in the valve direct arrangement no need of any other uh, things okay so pressure sensor will be directly mounted into the valve there from the pressure sensor i have to give a 
input that is i have to communicate to the signal processor that is what i have to communicate no when the tire pressure is going below a particular value that is uh, say for uh, car say 28 psi it is going less than 28 psi say 23 psi i have to give a warning to the driver so what i have to do my the pressure sensor should communicate with my signal processor that is i have to send a signal to this and and this unit should process the signal and it could should activate the indicator that is a low tire pressure warning indicator okay and this is the main uh, uh, thing we have to work already pressure sensor is existing so how i am going to connect the pressure sensor with the warning unit i have main objective of my tire pressure sensor is i have to give the pressure that is i have to give information about pressure of my air in the tire to the driver okay so for that how i am going to communicate for that we are using a transmission link okay it can be a transmitter just like your uh, radio there is no connection will be there uh, by radio frequency waves i can transmit the signals or i can use uh, some other mechanical uh, linkage also if possible so we have to look over this okay but actually what he is saying is we are using a transmitter by transmitter there this the signal processor will be receiving a signal so the tire pressure has gone beyond a level that is it has gone down okay so that will be uh, giving a indicator so that you will be monitoring the tire and it will be inflating the tire okay this is related to tire pressure sensor there is another system called automatically tire inflating system some of students will be doing a project in that in the car itself i will be having a air cylinder air compressor and getting a input from the tire pressure sensor i will be able to inflate okay that project also going on but uh, commercially not uh, successful because uh, i have to know the tire pressure if it is low immediately i will be going to the fuel uh, petrol tank and uh, or uh, we are pumping a station i can uh, rectify the defect okay on board uh, uh, inflation is not uh, needed i think so okay so tire pressure sensor will be giving a indication so that uh, i can ensure my safety of my vehicle okay when uh, tire pressure uh, goes uh, uh, a low value if you are conning the drive mode stability will get affected okay so this will be a warning system so what word you have to uh, use be clear about is small radio transmitter that will be transmitting the signal from pressure sensor to the warning unit okay next uh, we go through this uh, fuel level sensor fuel level sensor you can see there will be a potentiometer okay potentiometer and you are having a angular a semi angular unit okay that will be a uh, moving that is it will be connected to the float i think you might have studied float float is arrangement that will be kept in a fuel tank when you are uh, seeing your fuel tank no there will be arrangement in a two wheeler will be having a indication how much fuel is there a digital uh, uh, bar will be coming that uh, will be calibrated with help of volts that is when uh, fuel is uh, uh, i am filling the tank the float will be rising so that i will be getting a uh, more uh, lines in my fuel uh, indicator when fuel is going down my float position will be changing then i will be uh, getting the input okay so this is the fuel level sensor so based on this float movement i have to generate a voltage and that should be <coughs> communicated to cpu previously that is a fuel level indicator and this one is fuel level sensor okay that input can be used for uh, ecu also so what will happen this float will be mounted at the center of the tank okay float will be mounted at the center of the tank then only i can accurately measure the fuel level okay then what is the problem with this no the whatever voltage is i am going to get i can't correlate the voltage directly with the fuel level because tank configuration will not be same there is tank tank configuration i can't correlate accurately with the voltage that is what i have to do in this fuel level sensor similar to our lookup table we have discussed the first unit no i have to develop a relationship between a voltage and fuel level that is i have to frame a relationship that is i have to conduct some uh, study 
that is this much voltage means fail level will be this much for this tank configuration i have to have some reference value the voltage ranging from 0 to 10 volt whatever it may be what will be the fail values so i have to develop see functional relationship between sensor voltage and fuel quantity so that i will be having in my computer memory so when this voltage is going to come the computer will not uh, give the onboard uh, fuel value it will be referring the memory for this voltage what will be the fuel level there it will be taking the data and we will be knowing how much uh, fuel is going to refer okay i am using a potentiometer the same thing whenever a varying quantity when a varying voltage is there i will be having a potentiometer and you can see uh, full mt uh, that is uh, how much voltage difference is there no so my voltage will be varying from say 0 to 5 whatever it may be empty means there will be one voltage full or there will be voltage so between this two values my voltage is going to change so this one is a variable voltage one terminal is uh, grounded and one terminal i am going to supply a power okay a reference voltage a regulated voltage is given and the next one is a crash sensor. Crash sensor is, uh, sensor will give the input that is when to deploy the airbag. Airbag is used for preventing the passenger occupants from crash. That is, it will uh, prevent from injury that will be uh, happening to it or whatever uh, parts. Okay. So, I have to initiate my, um, this uh, airbag. For that, I have to get the input from a sensor that is a crash sensor. You can uh, see this uh, sketch. There is, I will be having a roller weight that will be compressed with the spring. Okay. Whenever I am going to hit a obstacle, it can be a car. Here, it is a stationary obstacle. That is a wall. Okay. It is going to hit the wall. So, what happened? This ball, that is a weight roller will be moving upward that is moving in this direction it will be overcoming the spring force and it will be uh, moving okay so the corresponding uh, movement will be calibrated into voltage and that the voltage will be given by the crash sensor and it will be giving a signal to the switch okay it will be giving a voltage and it will be giving a signal to the switch to trigger so it will be triggering the air lag so what crash sensor is going to do is it will predict the sudden deceleration that is a uh, when i am striking an obstacle what will happen this weight roller will be moving so that uh, the voltage a uh, crash sensor will be giving a voltage and it will be a uh, triggering a switch that is crash sensor will be giving a voltage it will be a particular level that is it will be exceeding a threshold range so ecu or a controlled unit will be activating this uh, airbag okay so this control can be a mechanical or electronic. So it will be able to sense the obstacle. That is, it will be able to sense the deceleration so that I can uh, deploy my airbag, okay, crash sensor. So this is very, very critical for safety point of view. No compromise and 100% accuracy should be there. For you can see in some of cars, even though airbag is, uh, you can see in many cars, that is this type of problem will come. If, uh, during accident, what will happen? Airbag will not be uh, deployed. So injury will happen and person will be losing their uh, lives. Okay. And uh, uh, what happens sometimes? There will not be any uh, accident. There will not be any accident. But uh, the airbag will be uh, deployed. All this problem is happening due to the malfunctioning of triggering as well as uh, input from crash sensor. So this should be uh, devised uh, without any error. So the correct crashing, that is when the vehicle is about to crash, the correct scenario should be predicted by the crash sensor and the correct instance, the air black should be deployed. Then only uh, we can uh, ensure crash safety. Okay, this and all uh, will be uh, tested by agency. Here uh, ARA is testing and uh, compared to ARA, we are having a NCAP global testing standards. Okay, so you can see some cars will be having some ratings. Okay. So based on the ratings, uh, the customer will be having a, what to say, satisfaction, a reliability of the car. Okay. Next, last part is optical crankshaft position sensor. Why it is optical? No. Previously, we have used magnetic field, other things. Okay. Here, I'm going to use optical. 
that is light energy for to know which position the engine is in which position okay so you can see previously the disc will be having a protruding tap that is a projection on outside whereas here it will be having hole okay that is a hole will be there and uh, there will be two parts one is light emitting diode source and another one is photo transistor that is it will be collecting the light okay so light emitting diode will be passing a light whenever a opening is there so light will be traveling through this opening and it will be coming to the photo transistor this photo transistor based on the light it is going to receive it will be producing a voltage so that voltage will be indication the piston has reached the tdc uh, this cylinder that is a say four cylinder no uh, if it is coming say it is a second cylinder second cylinder piston has reached tdc and you have to remember this lines these lines are known as fiber optic light pipe okay fiber optic light pipe source is light emitting diode our receiver is photo transistor and we are having amplifier why amplifier no uh, voltage we have to measure okay so amplified voltage will give a i will be able to calibrate well okay so you can see whenever a particular voltage is reached i can understand the piston has reached tdc one advantage of this optical crankshaft position sensor is even though engine is not running okay engine is not running my crankshaft is not uh, rotating and uh, my flywheel is not rotating i can sense where the engine is uh, where the position of the engine because it is based on optical uh, crankshaft position sensor okay so i can uh, sense it okay i am having a light so i can sense even though when engine is not running okay so we can see a disc as holes i am having a fiber optic uh, pipes so the 2.4 volt is for high level and 0.8 for uh, low low level and the major drawback this you have to highlight when any dirt or oil is going to get accumulated in the diode i will not be able to sense the position okay so i have to ensure that the sensor should be free from dirt and oil okay and this sensor can be used for determining the speed also i told you no know, wheel speed sensor there i used uh, magnetic field the same optical principle can be used for uh, measuring the speed how oh, no number of electrical pulses from per second from the sensor it will represent the speed per second okay so you understand the application of optical that is i can uh, use it for crankshaft position sensor also and i can use it for my uh, speed sensor also so with this uh, second unit is over and you can see working principle inductive what are the sensor working based on magnet crankshaft camshaft wheel speed engine speed okay all effect crankshaft camshaft thermistor temperature engine temperature manifold temperature and piezo electric piezo electric means a knock it has to predict the vibration mechanical uh, movement should be converted into voltage hot wire that is temperature resistant mass air flow variable resistant fuel level sensor optical speed angular position okay so these are the working principle i may ask a question uh, identify the sensors uh, having working principle of all effect then you have to tell crankshaft position camshaft position like this okay so go through this uh, table and this will be the end of second unit okay so i have completed second unit next class we will start uh, third unit if you are having any doubt you can ask otherwise you can uh, say no doubts and you can leave the call okay thank you any doubts thank you sir no uh, doubts okay. uh, okay. anyone is having doubt okay any doubts you can ask otherwise you can uh, disconnect the call and you can go thank you sir ha ah, thank you meenakshi is there any doubt
ಪ್ರೀತಿ ಪರ್ಚೇಸ್ ದಿನ ಸಶ್ವಿನ್ ವಸಂತ್ ಇಫ್ ನೋ ಡೌಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಓಕೆ ನಾವು ಐ ಆಮ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕನೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಕಾಲ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಎನಿ